What's going on, GSC? What's going on? Hey, it's Pastor Brandon. Listen, we are at week five of Love Revolution. I don't know about you guys. I'm so excited about church this morning. Hey, if you're out there and it's your first Sunday with us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Like my man AP says, every single Sunday. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us right now. And man, we are so appreciative of you. Listen, here at Greater Shallow, we are a church, a body of believers who know who we are in Christ, embrace who we are in Christ, and we walk out who Christ says we are. That's our vision of the church, and that's what we live out every single day. So welcome to our GIC online campus. I pray that you get blessed. Now, 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 now here at Greater Shallow, we're a multi-site church, right? We have multiple sites here at Greater Shallow, because I know I just said, our online campus. We have more than just our online campus. And so I want to really quick help you to understand or help you to, to, to identify um, who we are as Greater Shallow in the context of our campuses. So we have five campuses here at Greater Shallow Church, where I'm actually right now at our Eastern campus, our broadcast campus. Here's where we do many of our streaming from. Here's where we actually have our Sunday morning service on, on, within the Eastern Pennsylvania area. Um, I'm here on the Eastern campus right now. Y'all see the chair that's socially distanced, y'all? Uh, uh, yeah, I know, I, okay, I'm not gonna get into that announcement yet, but I'm here at the Eastern campus hanging out. And then also we have our Stroudsburg campus all the way in the Monroe County. What's going on Stroudsburg campus? Major shout out to campus pastor Selena Brown. Uh, for her doing an incredible job leading the campus and uh, helping to galvanize what's happening in the Monroe County. Do me a favor, if you're in the Monroe County area, join us on the Stroudsburg campus on March 28th. It's going to be an incredible service. It's going to be our first service back in the building, and I promise you, you won't, you won't regret it. Pastor Selena and her entire team are doing an incredible job to make sure when you walk into that building, you feel the statement, welcome home. So yeah, we, we have our Strasbourg campus, uh, and then also we have our Bethlehem campus, it's our bilingual campus, shout out to Pastor Miriam, Minister Dave, you guys are doing an incredible job in Bethlehem, 51 Hillman Street, um, and oh, let me rewind really quick if I can, I could do it, it's a free show, can I rewind Aaron? <laughs> Join us if you can on our Strasburg campus, 831B Ann Street. You want to make sure you're there on March the 28th. March the 28th, make sure you're in those seats. Also, our Bethlehem campus, what's going on Bethlehem? Um, our bilingual campus, uh, GSCB, shout out to Pastor Marion Minister Dave. They're doing an incredible job um, on our Bethlehem campus, 51 Hillman Street. Um, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You want to make sure you're in the building for that as well. It's our bilingual campus. I was there last week and I enjoyed myself so much. I even learned a new song. I, I learned a new word, Santo! I've been saying Santo a lot lately. And so, um, yeah, I love what's going on in the Bethlehem campus. And then also our Sanford campus. What's going on, PR, Javari, Sade, uh, uh, Talisha? What's going on, y'all? What's up? Our Sanford campus, man, we are excited about what God is doing on our Florida campus right now. They're having service right now. Lifting the name of Jesus, man, I love what God is doing down there. He's not just giving them 80 degree weather, but also he's growing the campus. God is doing a great work down in Sanford, Florida. And now you're on our online campus. What's going on online, folks? Come on, everybody outside, everybody at home. Come on, do the bank head bounce with me. Bank head bounce. Bank head bounce. Aaron probably playing Montel Jordan right now. <laughs> playing Montel Jordan. Uh, anyway, if you're on the online campus, what's going on, y'all? Man, I'm so excited about what God is doing on our online campus as well. And then I gotta make a big shout out to our Haiti campus, Pastor Joe. He is in the States right now. So if you guys get a chance, reach out to him, encourage him through text message. God is doing a great work through him and the campus at Haiti. Um, listen, we are GSC five campuses. And, 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 and in the midst of all of that, one of the most important things is you don't hear anything else I've said right now. Hear this, hear this. Come on, lean in real quick. Share, 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 share. I don't know how I can shake the camera to make, but share this if you can really quick. Share this with the world uh, because today, today, the word that's getting ready to be shared, listen, I'm, I can't even tell you what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to be a powerful word. I've had a chance to kind of check it out a little bit already. God's doing something special through this Love Revolution series. 
Listen, I got to get up out of here uh, because worship is coming up next. But one more time, do me a major favor. Share, 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 share. Now, not only share what we're doing here on our online space with your friends and your family, but share with the world. We're coming back to the church, y'all. March 28th, we're back in the building. Palm Sunday, make sure you are here. Now, listen, you have to register. I'm excited about it. You have to register. You can't just show up. Please register, and the registration um, link will go out very, very soon. Look out on our social media and our YouTube page to be able to see when that happens. But you got to register to be in the building. Trust me, I'm telling you, there are so many folks who are ready to come back now. So make sure you're one of the first ones. Um, but March 28th, we are back in the building. We worshiping Jesus. We lifting our hands. We singing our songs. We shouting, come on, hell. Oh. Was that, did I just do the, the Corvette? Anyway, I'm cool. So <laughs> listen, y'all, I love y'all so much. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done because we got worship that's coming up. I know y'all laughing at me. Probably the kids laughing at me. Whatever, whatever. We have fun here at Greater Shallow. Um, because one of the greatest things that we love to do at Shallow is worship the Lord, not just through having fun, but also through song. Check out our worship squad. Talk to y'all later. Peace. Hallelujah. Here we are again on another Sunday. Amen. And God is still blessing. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is wonderful. We just want you guys to worship with us. Praise the Lord with us. I say it every Sunday, move the furniture out the way, because you're about to get your praise on, amen? Gather your family members right now, and we're going to bless the Lord on today, amen? Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to gather in your presence. Thank you for keeping us thus far. Thank you for life and health and strength. Thank you, oh God, that you have never left us and you've never forsaken us. Lord God, as we offer up our offering of praise and honor and adoration to you today, we pray that you will be well pleased, God. Let something that is said or done touch our hearts, God. Let us be able to receive the word of the Lord today and allow us to apply it to our lives and be transformed and changed for the better so that we may be able to reach others, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to touch those who are going to be bringing the word, touch our pastor, oh God, and all those on staff, oh God, that you would continue to strengthen them, because strengthen him. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for your word that is going forth today, that you will be glorified and magnified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just want you to clap your hands with us, stomp your feet with us, get your praise on. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to praise
you, Jesus. Blessings and glory and honor. They all belong to you, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessings and glory and honor. They, come on, we got to say that again. Come on, y'all. Yeah. They all belong to you, Jesus. Yes, God, because you've been so good. You've been so good. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory.
Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo! God is good. God is good. Yes. Hallelujah. God reigns forever. Thank you, Jesus. Yes! Oh, you can put your hands together for this one, too. Come on.
Well, good morning, Greater Shallow Church. We reach a portion of our service where you can participate at home. This is the portion of our service where we give. Uh, we give of our, here at Shiloh, we have a great mantra, which is called Give, Love, Serve, um, where we give of our time, we give of our, our resources, we give of our, our efforts, um, and we give of our, our gifts and talents to the ministry. And this is where we give and show God how we honor him through our giving. Um, Pastor Phil just preached a tremendous series um, called Love Revolution. Um, and it just talks about how we are told to be the, 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 the doers and the hands and foot of Jesus. So this is a good opportunity for you to be the hands and foot of Jesus, for us to make an impact in the regions that we serve. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, Pastor got before you and talked about our disaster relief and uh, uh, how we're making an a, a impact in the Texas community, um, how we have partnered with the organization there in the church um, that is getting resources to those in need. They provided um, getting them in contact with contractors and plumbers and as well as giving them the plumbing and stuff that they need. So if you give to that disaster relief, every penny, every dime, every dollar that you give um, gets to that organization as well as even during this pandemic um, as we still um, look to provide resources for individuals that are struggling through um, mortgage assistance, rental assistance, assistance and um, clothing um, or food assistance, whatever they need me be, be. We've been addressing here at GSC and all of our campuses, um, as well as Easton, Sanford, um, as well as in Haiti, as well as in Bethlehem. Uh, we're making an impact in every area that we serve in. So we just want you to come alongside of us as we um, utilize the dollars that you give and we internally um, put those back out into the community that we serve. Um, so we, this is a rich ground um, that you're sowing into. Um, the Bible speaks about it's better to give than to receive. Um, Luke 6, 38 talks about give and it shall be given unto you. Um, press down, check it together, um, run it over that man shall give unto your bosoms. So we just ask you and, and, and implore you to continue to give and just, I can tell you, you can't be God given. Um, uh, here at GSC, we have multiple ways for you to give. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you will see the different platforms where you can give um, through our push pay app, which is predominantly way of giving, uh, where the, you can give contactless through, through um, electronically through um, downloading the PushPay app, or you can just go through GSC, you can hit the Give tab, um, and it will just connect you to the PushPay uh, option of our of our feature. Um, you can give by um, dropping off your tithes and offerings to the church, which is the addresses below, uh, Wednesdays between the hours of 4 to 8 p.m. Um, you can even give through the snail mail of um, putting a stamp in the envelope and mailing it into the, to the address as well that's listed below, which is that 403 Pastor Fred Davis Street. Um, and so we provide many opportunities. We don't want to be a hindrance in your giving because um, we believe um, in giving here. You know, it's an honor. It's not even just an honor. It's a privilege for us to give um, to be a blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and glory, Father, for who you are, Father. We thank you, Father, for these tithes and offers that come in, Father. Let them be, be used for the building and uplifting of your kingdom, Father. Bless those who are able to give in this offering, and bless those who are not able to give, um, that they'll be able to give in future offerings, Father. Um, let the uh, enrich them, Father, and give it back to a hundredfold for all that they give, Father. Um, as we continue to make an impact in the communities that we serve, Father, we just give you the praise, Father. We give you the glory, Father, and we give you the honor. And these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. None other like him. Colin. Woo! Yes. We worship you, God.
Happy Sunday, family. It's Pastor Jay. Listen, I am so excited to be with you this morning, this beautiful Sunday. The Lord has woken us up one more time, and we have another opportunity to listen to what God has to say. We have another opportunity to get it right. We have another opportunity to connect with brothers and sisters, even though we're online. Um, and so I'm excited to share this word with you today. I want to thank God for our pastors, Pastor Phil and Pastor Christina. And, and let's go ahead and, and get right into it. I, I want to talk to you today, and I'll read scripture in just a moment, um, in our last installment of the Love Revolution series. And as you know, Pastor Phil and Pastor Christina have been preaching, and on Wednesday nights we've had amazing ministers sharing on this topic of love revolution, even tying in some of the epistle of Romans. Um, it has been an amazing journey for us, church, and I don't know about you, but I have been growing in my faith, and love has lifted me like never before, and I'm so grateful to Jesus for that. Um, I want to go ahead and share from the Word of God. We're going to talk today 
from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And, and if you are familiar with that scripture, you'll know that it is called the love chapter. And I want to pull just a few verses as we talk today on a topic of love is a miracle. Let's look to the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 says this, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Verse 8, I love this family. Love never fails. Let's pray together for a moment. Would you go to the Lord with me? Today we're going to be ending this series, but we're talking about the fact that love is a miracle. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness, for your love, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the fact that you love us better than we love ourselves. You loved us before the world was even formed, before there was water in the ocean, before there was blue color in the sky, before there was green grass, before there were rocks and mountains and roads and bridges and tunnels. God, you loved us before all of that. And so I thank you. I pray that you'll be with us today. Um, thank you, God, for bringing us through this Love Revolution series. And I pray that you'll walk with us today. May someone be edified and lifted up. And may you be glorified, Jesus. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, so family, as you know, we have had an amazing journey these last four weeks, and this being week five. And, and Pastor Phil and Pastor Christina have shared from the word of God and have encouraged our hearts as we've been finding ourselves in this Love Revolution series. And, and I'll share with you today, my goal is not to really add nor take away from anything that our pastors have shared, but, but really just to uh, uh, close us out in this series and, and really aid and come alongside all that they have already said, because the truth of the matter is God loves us and we should love others. Uh, that, that's just foundational truth from the scripture. That's just truth for your life and my life. And so today we're going to be sharing some things that we may have already known, but, but are never old, um, but are never tired, but are never uh, uh, too said too much. And these are things that we can carry with us all throughout our lives. And so pastor talked about loving God first and, and then talking, he talked to us about loving self and pastor K talked about loving others. And last week, pastor in a, an amazing sermon talked about just love. But, but, but if there was any way that I can encapsulate everything that has been said, and if there was any way that I can tie it all together and, and talk to you on week five of this series, I would say this family love my God is a miracle. What do I mean by love is a miracle? Love, the fact that God loved you and I in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our struggle, in the midst of all of the things that we have gotten wrong, in the midst of all of our imperfections, the love that God has for you and I that says, I know that they mess up. I know that they don't get it right. I know that they have done things wrong. I still love them. Man, that, 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 that's a miracle. And, and I would say to you today that the love that God has given to us that causes us then to go and show love to the world, that's a miracle too. Because if it was not for God's love, if it was not for the fact that he saved us and raised us and lifted us up and that even as John 3.16 says that he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, that, that he, God himself, put on flesh according to the text and came down and a suit of flesh was prepared for him and he lived and he loved and he died, man, that, 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 that's a miracle. I looked at the dictionary and I saw the definition of the word miracle, and I want to share that with you all today. A miracle is defined by the dictionary as a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. You see, I love this definition because if you think back on your life, if you think back on the things that you have been through, if you think back on yesterday or even today, you will find that this surprising and welcome event is not explicable by natural or scientific law. Naturally, the world should be in hell right now. 
Naturally, things there should be calamity more than we're even seeing. Naturally, we should be stressed out and going through and worried about tomorrow. But I'm so glad that the love that God has is a miracle because I don't have to worry because God knows his plans for me. His scripture says in Philippians, don't be anxious for anything. You see, it's a miracle and it cannot be explained by natural happenstance. It cannot even be explained by science. But you see, the love that God has for the world that gives me peace in the midst of trouble that love is divine and that love is a miracle can't science explain it can't natural things explain it it has to be the love of God it has to come from the divine it has to come from something greater than the world and so the love that God has for you and I family I, I submit to you today it's nothing short of a miracle you see, we have walked through this series, and, and again, as I shared, we have talked about the different ways that we can share our love, and we have talked about the fact that love should be given to God, love should be given to ourselves, and love should be given to our neighbor. Pastor Kay so eloquently shared that sometimes we like to pick and choose who the neighbor should be. We like to pick and choose who the love should be given to, but you know what? The fact of the matter is, is that Jesus died for all, and Jesus' love now should be spread to the world, and he desires that we would love everyone who comes into our midst. And, and we'll talk a little today, but I'm telling you, when you ask the question, who is my neighbor, as the man did in Luke and Pastor preached about the Good Samaritan, I'll tell you, any and everyone is our neighbor. My first point today, family, and I already dipped into it a little bit, is that the love of God for you and I is a miracle. I look at the text and, and, and I see that, that, that there, um, as you know, in Bible uh, or before uh, uh, Jesus came back, if you look through out the Old Testament, there were a lot of things that went on that were kind of crazy to you and I. Uh, there were folks who were violating and folks who were uh, sinning and folks who were doing things against the standard of the Lord God, our Father. There were folks who were doing things that, that were not cool at that time and there were folks who had to die because of the things that they had done. You see, I'm so glad today that Jesus came and that he walked the earth because if it had not been for Jesus coming down and dying and being the perfect sacrifice, you and I probably would have a little lightning strike. You and I probably would find ourselves dying dead struck down. You and I would probably find ourselves sick. And, and I'm not saying that the ways of old were ways that we would be comfortable with today, but they were just the way that things are. And I'm telling you, I'm so glad that Jesus came and that he lived and that he loved and that he died for you and I, that all of the stuff that we do, all of the craziness that we think, all of the things that we have said that we should not have said, the things that we have done that we should not have done, all of those things have been made have been made forgiven because of Jesus. You see, I'm so glad about the miracle of Jesus. I'm so glad that even in the way that he came to the earth was a miracle born of a virgin, right? I'm so glad that even the fact that he lived a sinless and blameless life, that in itself was a miracle. But, but I'm so glad today that the miracle of his love says that no matter what I do, no matter where I go, no matter the mistakes that I make and the mistakes that you make, his love is for all. His love is for you. His love is for I. And I'm so glad about it today. You see, family, one of the cool things about knowing that the love that God has for us is a miracle, it means that when we see the miracle, we can go on and be the miracle. I'll say that one more time. You see, when you and I are able to come to a place where we realize that God's love for us is a miracle, when, when we are able to come to a place to see that, my God, God, I should be dead, and in my grave, I should not have the favor that I have. I should not have the love that I have. I should not have the family that I have. I should not have the job that I have because I'm messed up, because I'm imperfect. My God, when we realize that it is the miracle of God's love that even allows us to live the lives that we do, to have the things that that we have and to walk humbly with our God the way that we do, it should cause us now not only to see it, but, but to be. You see, Pastor talked in a previous message about the woman who was found at the well, at Jacob's well, when Jesus came. And you can find this in John chapter 4. 
You see, there were a few things that Jesus did when he encountered this woman in John chapter 4 that I think are really special in our message today and in our receiving and knowing that the love of God is a miracle. You see, Jesus, because of the love that he had for this woman and for all of those who were in the earth, he did a few things for her. And let me tell you a little bit about the miracle of Jesus' love. One of the things that Jesus did is that he spoke the truth in love to this woman at the well. He, he said to her, you know, uh, we often point out the fact that he mentioned that she had a whole bunch of husbands and she had men who were not her husband that were that she was connected with. And, and we often mention that. But there was a moment where this woman at the well began to try to tell Jesus about worship. And Jesus tells her that, that there will be a day where the worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. You see, Jesus told the truth to this woman, not only about her personal life, but about the, the worship, the ways of worship and the ways of connecting and the faith. And I want to share with you today that not only should we be, um, or not only should we see the miracle, but we can be the miracle as well in the way that we love. Jesus loved this woman so much that he spoke the truth in love. Jesus spoke the truth and love to her even when it was not comfortable. And, and you see, sometimes we tell the truth. Sometimes we speak the truth. But sometimes we speak the truth and it's not in love. You see, Jesus was an example to us all of how to tell the truth with love at the root of what we say. You know, we're just nasty people sometimes. And I know that's a strong word. I know that that's a strong sentiment. And I know that there's probably someone on the other end of this who says, oh, no, I'm not nasty. I'm blessed and highly favored. I've got everything together. I've got it all right because of what Jesus has done. I'm all good. Let me say this to you. Yes, because of what Jesus has done, you are good. Your sin are covered. But there is a reality that we are not perfect people. Jesus was the only perfect man who walked the earth. And we've got proclivities in the day that we're able to admit that we don't always do things right the minute that we're able to admit that we don't always have it right that we have got to get some things together that's a day that Jesus can work with us that's a day where like the woman at the well we can become vulnerable and God can change us and God can help us and God can show this miracle love that he has for us but you see sometimes we we don't speak the truth and then sometimes we speak the truth but it's not in love you see, we can learn from Jesus in this miracle of love that he gives that we ought to speak the truth. And Jesus, I also noticed at this well, he spoke at the right time and place because the love that he shared and the truth that he spoke catapulted this woman into her destiny. How do I know that? You go to John 4, you'll see in this, in this text that, that the woman goes on. Uh, I believe it's John 4, verse 39. Look at what the text says. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did, she said. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two more days. And because of his words, many more became believers. You see, the woman who was at the well in John chapter 4, not only did she have a chance to see the miracle, the Savior, Jesus Christ, who was before her, but after she had a chance to see the miracle, she took an opportunity to be the miracle. Did you know that when we see the miracles that God does in our life, we should go on and be the miracle? You see, I realize that sometimes we believe that miracles only look like a miraculous healing or miracles only look like um, things that were not um, 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 together being made straight or, or, or we put an, uh, uh, a definition on what a miracle looks like. But I want to share with you today, family, the fact that you woke up this morning, the fact that you've got breath in your body, the fact that we are here in the house of God or in our own home, but with, the, uh, with God in our hearts, the fact that we are there, that in itself is a miracle. You see, but this woman, she not only saw a miracle, but she sought to go out and be a miracle. How do I know this? Because she went and she told the town. You see, this woman became contagious. 
She went and said, I saw a miracle, and because I saw this miracle, because I saw this love, because love is a miracle, family, because I have seen the miracle, because I have seen the love, I've got to tell somebody else. And because she told somebody else, the men and women, and even the children, I would assume, who were in that town now learned about Jesus, and there was opportunity for others to be saved. Did you know that when you see the miracle, and that when you sought to be the miracle, folks can get Get connected to Jesus. That's how important it is for us to share and to spread the love of God and to love the fact or to spread the fact that he is a miracle. Isaiah chapter 6, we see the prophet. In verse 5, there's a moment where he realizes that he doesn't have it all together. He realizes that, 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 that there is something that he needs and he connects with the Lord in this moment. And, and so Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 says, Woe unto me, I cried, I'm ruined. I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. How many of us can say that we have some uncleanliness in us and there's a whole bunch of folk around us that we're around who have some uncleanliness in us as well. But he says this in the next, in the B part of the verse, he says, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Verse 6 says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar when it touched my mouth. And he said, See, this has touched your lips. You see, Isaiah, realizing that he was unclean, had a moment that I would consider to be a moment where the love of the Lord, and it may not have looked like God providing a need in his life or giving him something or, or uh, uh, making a wish happen for him, but, but he had a moment where he was able to connect with love, true love, that being the holy of holies, that being God Almighty, and it was in that moment that he realized that something needed to change. And, and so Isaiah now realizes that, that, that or he has this encounter, and, and the seraphim touches his lips and says, your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. That, my God, is a miracle. My sin and your sin being taken away and atoned for. That, that's the miracle of Christ. That, that's the miracle of what God has done. That, that's the miracle of the love of the Lord. That, that's love that is a miracle. Verse 8 says this in Isaiah chapter 6. Then I heard the voice from the Lord or of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, this is Isaiah, and he says, Here I am, send me. You see, just like the woman at the well, when there was an encounter with this love, when there was an encounter with this miraculous love, the love of God that saves, the love of God that heals, the love of God that changes, the love of God that says it's, it may not be all right, but it's going to be okay. When there's an encounter with this love, we ought to be compulsed or compelled, excuse me, to go forth and to do the work of the Lord. We ought to be compelled to go forth and share the same love that we have received. You see, this woman who was at the well in Isaiah, they they both now had this encounter with love that is greater than any other love and because they had this encounter with this love because this love had touched them because this love was now a part of their being because this love had made a way into their life because of this they now said I'm ready to rock I'm ready to roll I'm ready to go I'm ready to share I'm ready to preach I'm ready to declare I'm ready to teach I'm ready to share that there is a God who is a God who of love there is a God who is able to save to the utmost there is a God who desires relationship. What I'm saying to you today is that when we see miracles around us, when we see the love of God, we ought to go out and be the very same. I love this series, family, because I'm a history guy. And you know, words like revolution, revolutionary, history words, words that you may encounter in, in, a, in a U.S. history course, those, those, those words excite me, okay? I'm a little nerdy in that sense. I love history. And I was so thrilled to see that we were in a series called The Love Revolution because uh, it drew, drew me to the dictionary again, which I read often. And, and I want to share with you today some words uh, or, or the definition that is given for the word revolution and why I think it applies to us today. And then we're going to get back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because that's important too. Revolution 
can be defined as this, a forcible overthrow of a government or social order in favor of a new system. I'll read that one more time. A forcible overthrow of a government or social order in favor of a new system. You see, one of the things that I realized when we talk of in this series about love revolution is that we ought to flood the world with love. You see, we should now, and, and we may not be talking about a government, but we, we are certainly talking about a social system or a natural system or even a world system, if you will, that requires something new, that requires a revolution, that requires an overthrow. You see, we family as the believers, we family as those who are connected with the Lord, those family or us family who have been saved and made new and changed and forgiven, we ought to change uh, the system because the system right now says that we ought to hate our neighbor and hate our brother and hate anybody who's different than us. We ought to change the system to a new system that says that I love you even if I don't look like you. I love you even if I don't believe all that you believe. I love you because you are made how you have been created by God and you may not be his child yet, but you certainly are his creation. We have a chance to change the system, family. We have a chance to change the system uh, now from a system in the world that says that it is crazy to live for Jesus we ought to change the system. A love revolution that says the love that we promote, the love that we give it comes because we have received it from God. We ought to change the system and have a new system now that says that Jesus is either coming soon or I'm leaving soon. And either way, I should make this life count. You see, we have a chance now in this revolution now to make a difference, family. We have a chance now in this revolution to change the paradigm. We have a chance now to change the way that we love, to change the way that we live, to even change the way that the world sees Christians, the way the world sees believers, the way the world sees the ones who have been called into marvelous light by Jesus Christ. You see, that definition again says a forcible overthrow of a government or social order. And I think now about the coup d'etat that where leaders have been overthrown because there's been a revolution in the country where they changed the way that things were, where there may have been a, a dictator or a ruler or, or a fascist or one of those type of things. And you see, they used to do something called a coup d'etat, but I realize, my God, that we are not doing a coup d'etat, but we're doing a coup d'etat. No embracing war, who Christ says that we are. Family, we're not doing a coup but we're doing a cue and that is because of the miraculous love that God has given right where you are in your house. You ought to say thank you God for your amazing love, your miraculous love. You see, we also family should give free love. And, and if you were alive during the 60s, remember, I'm a history guy. If you were alive during the 60s and 70s, even the early 80s, I say the word free love to you, you're probably thinking something a little different. <laughs> you see, I believe that we should give free love. Look at this. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 8, uh, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you ought to give. And family, the truth is this. You and I, we ought to give free love. And, and, and I'm not talking about uh, taking somebody down, if you will. You'll get that in a minute. But I'm talking about lifting somebody up. I'm talking about telling someone that Jesus saves to the utmost. I'm talking about telling someone that you can make it. I'm talking about telling somebody that Jesus still heals and that Jesus still saves. We ain't taking nobody down with free love, my God, but we're lifting folks up with this free love and we're giving it because we have received it from God. You see, free love, we ought to give out, family. And it's important for me to share this. Did you know that you can be someone's miracle just by the way that you show love to them? You see, Pastor talked to us last week from Luke, Good Samaritan. And if you've been going to Shiloh for a while, a few years ago, 
one of the coolest things that I've ever done in this church was pastor was narrating as the uh, beaten man. And I actually played that beaten man. We did an illustration here where, where I was beat up and bandaged on the road. And, and my brother played a Samaritan. He came and he lifted me up. And, 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 and it was an amazing uh, demonstration. I enjoyed it. Bandaged, bleeding. It was cool to see. And, and, and did you realize now that the man or the Samaritan man who rescued this man, who paid his way and pastor preached it amazingly last week, he was a miracle for that man. See, I'm saying to you today that miracles aren't just uh, the things that, that, that we never would have expected or the things that we think are hard or unattainable. Miracles are the simple things. Miracles are loving God and loving people. Miracles are loving your family. Miracles are being righteous and having integrity. Miracles are going forth and prospering, being blessed in Jesus' name and doing what Jesus has called for us to do. You see, family, that in itself is a miracle. So I want to say this to you. Love is a miracle. And, and going back to our original text, we talked about the love chapter, or we read from it and referenced it. But let me tell you about this love that's a miracle. Let me tell you some of these attributes that I think are just great for us because we have walked through this amazing series and we all at the end of it, when we leave uh, uh, this place or when these cameras go off and, and when you go to breakfast today or when you gather with your family, we had ought to be challenged to go forth and be miracles all in the earth. And our pastors throughout the series have shared the very same that we had ought to just not receive, but we ought to go out and give. We ought to go out and be miracles in the form of the believers of Jesus. We ought to go out and be miracles, uh, human miracles for the world. Love, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says is patient. And that means that when we go out, when we leave, we really had ought to show and exercise more patience. We, 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 to be miracles, to be the kind of miracle that God has been to us, we have got to show the patience that God has shown us to people. And I want to encourage you today because there may be somebody watching who has grown impatient with somebody, with something, with some situation. I want you to know today that you, God, how God has made you a miracle. He's given you all that you need to be a miracle. And the same patience that he shows, the same long suffering that he shows, he wants you and I to show it in the earth today. But you see, love now, love, replace love with yourself. I, I, I declare today, Jason is patient because if I'm going to be a miracle and love is a miracle I've got to now carry the attributes of love so 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 do this family I I don't know I won't bore you with with just Jason's but right where you sit why don't you put your name in I declare today family that you right where you are sitting you will be a miracle you will be love you will show the love of God and so now you are able to say I am patient and I'm not taken from the text I know what revelation says I am kind I do not envy I do not boast I am not proud I don't dishonor others I'm not self-seeking. I'm not easily angered. I keep no record of wrongs. I do not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. Hallelujah. I always protect. I always trust. I always hope, and I persevere. Now, this last verse says love never fails. Let me tell you, family, even though you may mess up, even though you may go through, even though stuff may happen, with God, all things are possible. And with God, even your failures are not failures. Even your L's are an L. And what that means, is your losses are a lesson. You ought to know today that because of the God that you serve and the God that I serve, we can have all of these traits. We can have all of these traits and we can be the love for the world that God desires. I don't know who you are. And I don't know what you're going through. And I don't even know what frustrations you have. I don't know what, what, what problems you have. I don't know if you're sick. I don't know if you're going through it. I don't know if your marriage is horrible. I don't know if your kids are acting up. I don't know any of this family, but I'll tell you what I do know today. I'll tell you that our God is love. I'll tell you that our God has given us all that we need to be the people of God that he desires for us to be. I, I'll tell you today, I know that our God has desired for us to 
be his hands and feet and thus so to be many miracles in the earth. And so this message wasn't to hype. This message wasn't to pump. But this message was to inspire you to know who you are. This message was to inspire you to know that God has said great things about you. This message has inspired you to know that even when you walk through or even when everything is not perfect, the love of God is still there. And my God, it's a miracle. I, I want you to know today, family, that whoever you are with Jesus, all things are possible. With God, you can do anything. With God, you can change. With God, you can grow. With God's love, this miracle love, you now can have life that God desires in a life that honors him. And so family, we have found ourselves coming to the close of this Love Revolution series. And I, I, I can preach more, I can talk more, we can go more to the Bible, but I want to look you right in your eye, right where you're sitting at home. Would you just look me right in my eyes, right at this moment? I want to challenge you with the heart of the Lord. I want to challenge you to be a miracle today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next week. Don't wait for that person to get back in town. Don't wait for them to call you. Don't wait for someone to invite you to be a miracle. Family, we ought to go out and be miracles today. That means you can go out to the store and pay for something for somebody. That means even more than that, you can call somebody and tell them that you're sorry. That means that you can live a life um, better. That means that you can apologize. That means that you can grow. That means that you can change. That means that you can pray more, read your Bible, serve a senior citizen, serve a child, serve your family. My God, we can be miracles, family. I want to challenge you today. If there is nothing that you have taken from this message today, just know who God says that you are. Just know that your life, you are a miracle. And because you are a miracle and because you have seen a miracle of God, you ought to go out and be one as well. I don't know about you, but when I leave this church right now, I'm going to go out and I'm going to be a miracle. Jesus, as we saw in Matthew, sent out the disciples. And he said, go to the lost. Don't, don't, don't go to see the Gentiles. Don't go to see the Samaritans. You go talk to the folks who are lost. And my last point today, family, is we consider that love is a miracle. My last point is that there are lost folks who need our love. Now, you may be a person who thinks that someone's lost just because they smoke cigarettes. You may think someone is lost because they drank alcohol. You may think someone is lost because they have an earring or because they wear uh, Jordans to church, but, but, but that's not who I'm talking about today. I'm talking about someone who is lost because they have not tapped in to the greatest love of all, the miracle love, the original miracle love, and that is the love of Jesus Christ. My last point, family, is that there is someone who is lost who needs you to be a miracle, who needs the love that you have. And so, family, may we know that when we leave, when we walk, when we go to work, when we go to school, that we can share the Lord with the lost. And because like the woman from John chapter 4, like the woman who was at the well, she went and shared about a man who told her everything that she ever did. And you and I, we can share about the man who healed us when we were sick. We can share about the man who saved our life. We can share about the man who took addiction away. We can share about the man who made us new. We can share about the man who put it in our heart to forgive. We can share about the man who took bitterness away. We can share about the man who saved our soul and the man who now guarantees that I'm on my way to heaven. The man who said that my name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The man who now knows everything that I've ever done but loves me anyway with a miraculous love and a love that is not only for me and for you but for all who are lost. I challenge you today Tell somebody about Jesus. Be a miracle, family. Love is a miracle, but you're a miracle as well. I believe in miracles, and I believe in you.
because love is a miracle. R.I.P. Whitney Houston. Family, I love you so much. And we know that the Lord has much more in store. I'm so excited that next week, Pastor's going to be beginning a brand new series. But if we don't make it to next week, if for any reason the Lord comes back, or if for any reason your time is up or my time is up, and our number is called, I don't want to end today without making a profession or a confession of faith in the Lord Jesus and giving an opportunity to anyone who has not done the same. You see, family, I told you a little earlier that God's love is a miracle. The fact that he died, that you and I might have eternal life and connect with him even in the midst of the struggles and troubles of this world, that in itself is a miracle. And I want you to know today, if you are a person who has never accepted the miracle, if you're a person who has never tapped in and said, I acknowledge what he has done, if you are a person who has never said, Jesus, I need you, man, you, woman, children, you can have the miracle today. Romans, as we have discussed in Bible study, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, I believe, it is written, any person who confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, born of a woman, died, crucified, resurrected, anyone who believes in him will be saved. Doesn't mean that we wouldn't go through, doesn't mean we wouldn't have tough days. But it means that we would have tapped into the miracle of his love. And by tapping into the miracle of his love, that means that you and I, no matter what trouble the world brings, no matter what hell and calamity the world brings, it means that we don't walk alone in the midst of it. It means that we have a God on our side who loves us with the miracle love. If you want that miracle love today, if you want to make a decision for Jesus, if you want to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you want to invite him in, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. It's a prayer of confession and belief. Would you pray with me or repeat after me? Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. I mess up. I'm imperfect. I make mistakes. But today I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, thank you that love is a miracle. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me. Show me your plan for my life. I thank you for dying that I might live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, family, if you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know that the Lord heard it. Not only did he hear it, but he abided in it. Not only did he abide in it, but he now lives in you. And you begin your process of walking out as a child of God. Everything won't be perfect because you prayed that prayer. But it means that when you're walking through all of the calamity and the craziness of life, it means that you don't walk alone. Your next steps, family, are to connect to a church, to connect to a group of believers, like-minded folks. And you'll see a number on the screen. If you made the decision today for Jesus, I'm going to ask you to text that number because we have ministers on the other side of this screen, on the other side of this broadcast who desire to reach out to you, to grab you by the hand, to be a miracle for you, and to take you by the hand and help connect you to the one who knew you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. So congratulations, family. If you are in need of prayer, if you need a miracle, if you need the love of prayer, you can also text the number and we will have someone reach out. Family, I pray that you were blessed today. And I thank you so much for tuning in. Please go out, I challenge you. Be a miracle for somebody today. Love somebody today. We thank the Lord for allowing us to come together once again. God bless you, family.
We'll see you next week until we meet again. Man, what a powerful word. Love is a miracle. You've heard it from Pastor Jason already. He gave the appropriate altar call. But listen, if you're out there right now, you want to take your next step of faith. You say to yourself and you say, man, I really want to experience this love that is a miracle. Do me a favor. Do us a favor. There's a number on the screen. Text that number. And there's ministers on the other side who are they're excited to connect with you, to pray with you. They're excited to encourage you. And if you had a chance to take your next step of faith in the context of salvation, welcome home. Listen, y'all, our service was incredible today. That word was powerful. Worship was powerful. But don't go anywhere yet because we got the pulse. And we want you to know what's going on here at Greater Shallow Church. Love y'all so much. Pulse. Hello, GSC. Here are your post announcements. Mark your calendar for Sunday, March 28th. We will be back in the building for in-person services at our main campus and our Strasburg campus. Services will begin at 1030 a.m. at both campuses. We will still conduct service online via our Facebook and YouTube page, but please make sure you spread the word. All members and guests will need to register for in-person worship services, as well as practice all safety and social distancing protocols as directed by the CDC. Be sure to check out our plans through our various familiar media channels, the GSE website or our GSE mobile app for details concerning our reopening and registration process. Let's get ready. Good Friday service. Join us for a virtual Good Friday service via our Facebook and YouTube page Friday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. Stay tuned. Great news. Greater Shallow Church has been selected as a vaccination station for the COVID-19 vaccine. This is an opportunity for our members to have the chance to take the vaccine. You will first need to pre-register for the COVID-19 vaccine via the St. Luke's My Chart portal. Luckily, this process takes no longer than five minutes. The St. Luke's My Chart account can be accessed using the St. Luke's assigned unique code EMP270. If you are not already in the St. Luke's network, you can still receive the vaccine by signing up. If during the MyChart sign-up process you experience or receive an error or ask for an activation code, please contact St. Luke's at 866-785-8537 and choose option 5. A St. Luke's representative will guide you through the rest of the process and get you connected. Once we have a sufficient number of members signed up, we will inform the congregation of a date. For more information, please contact the church at 610-252-5640. The Eastern COVID Vaccine Equity Project was established to offer assistance to individuals struggling to get COVID vaccine appointments. This equity project will have volunteers available at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Easton, helping people who may not have computer access or the skills required to sign up for the MyChart accounts through St. Luke's portal. Walk-ins are welcome Wednesdays beginning March 10th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more information, please contact the church office at 610-252-5640. Please join the Trauma and Healing Small Group Thursday evenings beginning April 1st through April 29th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. via Zoom. The purpose of this small group is to bring healing to your heart, your spirit, and your soul from trauma or from loss. The group will be led by facilitators who are trained in Bible-based trauma healing. To learn more about the model, please visit TraumaHealingInstitute.org or contact Florida Minister Kim Brown at 973-336-0730. Save the date, June 19, 2021 for the Pastor Fred Davis Golf Scholarship Outing. The tournament event will take place at the Harker's Hollow Golf Club in Phillipsburg, New Jersey at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event cost is $110, which includes a golf cart, a round of golf, and food and beverage prior to first tee. Event registration will begin on April 1st, 2021. All the proceeds from this outing will go towards the student scholarships. For more information, please contact Deacon Renee Griffin at 610-217-0034 or Deacon Juan Vargas at 484-201-8940. Lastly, GSC, if you missed any of these announcements, please download our GSC mobile app. You can find all the information there. You can find our YouTube videos, you can find our sermon series, everything that's happening in the house of GSC is available on our GSC app. 
God bless you guys and have a great weekend.